Hi guys, welcome back. This is uh, vlog number, well technically three, but two as in the NC500. <coughs> so, I left you last time at the cafe, which was phenomenal. A really, really good place and I'd highly recommend it. You can't miss it. Um, we can put in on the description where the, um, the park for night car park was, so you'll be able to find a cafe very easily. Um, so anyway, we left that cafe, went and had that lovely walk. So we then went from there to Inverness. We thought, right, let's get to the NC500 and get on the holiday. So as we went into Inverness, you, you know, um, we saw the NC500 sign. So we started following those. And then just before we went over the bridge, there's a bridge that you go over as you leave Inverness. I, I saw a sign for Loch Ness. And I'm like, sod it, we're on holiday. Let's go to Loch Ness. That's another touristy thing to do. So, and head towards Fort William. So that's what we done. We, we hung a left and uh, went to Loch Ness and um, went to see if we could see Nessie. Um, we had a wonderful time. We, we, the drive was nice and easy. And because we lucked out and we kind of booked the holiday off our, our current works and we'd gone the week before it all got busy. Now we didn't know this, pure dumb luck. And we're so glad we did do it that way around. All the laybys are empty. So we found a huge layby and uh, jumped up on the wall, took a video of Loch Ness, took a load of pictures of us at Loch Ness. And um, yeah, just generally did the tourist thing, to be fair. Had a good look around, had a bit of a drive around. And um, what was amazing, Loch, Loch Ness is absolutely huge, huge, um, many, many miles long. And we were parked up and I stood on this wall taking some pictures and video and I could see right in the distance there was like you could see rain basically coming up through the valley coming up through Loch Ness and it got closer and closer and closer I'm like yeah we might as well get going now that's going to get heavy <clears throat> so we got in the van we spun around to head back to Inverness and just as we started getting going it caught up with us and it poured down so <clears throat> just interesting you could see it coming up the lock but they say Scotland is somewhere where you have all the seasons in one day. You get, you know, you have beautiful sun one minute, pouring rain the next minute, and then snow the next minute, wind. <clears throat> you get it all in a day. So we got back to Inverness and um, found the NC500 signs. Now, my daughter has got um, an app called Fog of the World, where everywhere you go, like the whole entire globe is covered in a fog and everywhere you go, it, it deletes the fog. So it's clear again. It's like a giant Google Maps. So she was unfogging everywhere we went and she screenshotted a lot of where we were. And it actually helped us because I'll, I'll explain in a minute. But so <clears throat> we got back into Inverness, found the NC500 signs and started following the signs. Got out of Inverness, started the NC500. So we thought and <clears throat> literally followed and every time an NC500 sign would say left or right, that's where we went. Uh, my daughter's um, sat there and she goes, we're not on the NC500. I'm like, I've not taken a single wrong turn. What do you mean? I said, every time an NC500 sign is there, we followed it. But obviously the, the whole road actually isn't signposted very well at all. So you need to follow the map. Like I actually downloaded the NC500 app on my phone and then you download the map so you can, cause there's a lot of places in Scotland where you don't get any signal. So I downloaded the map so you could check where you were. So she was just on my phone. She checked where we were and we were off quite, quite a way off actually the NC5. So she re-guided us back using her fog, fog of the world luckily and the map on, on the app and got us back on track but luckily we didn't miss any of the 500 we but we took a half decent detour in the, in the process and rejoined where we should have been so um so yeah anyone doing the nc5 pay attention to the map because the signposts are rubbish and they don't actually tell you like there are certain places where you do have to turn off 
and they're not there. It's not signposted. So don't rely on signposts, rely on maps. So anyway, <clears throat> that's another thing we found out the hard way. And we'd fully prepared for it. Like I said, I downloaded a map, got the app. Dort had already had Fog of the World. We'd looked at loads of things and that still went wrong. So it is something to be aware of. You need to be aware of where you are and that you are on the NC500. So anyway, carry along, go up the East Coast. And we're so glad we went that way first because to be fair, it's pretty, but we live by the sea. We already live by the sea. We've got beautiful scenery here. It's, it's different, but it's not like, wow, this place is phenomenal. It's, it's kind of like where we live, just slightly different. So for want of a better word, we just drove it. We, you know, we just drove, we stopped for fuel. We did stop and take a few pictures. There was, was one thing that was amazing. We stopped um, the van because obviously the salt and the snow that we'd had earlier on the trip, the van was covered and all the windows are covered in salt. So I wanted to wash it off and give it a clean. So we pulled up to get fuel while we we're getting fuel. We actually stopped and cleaned the van as well. And uh, we just come out of that junction to get back on the 500 and we were by a lock. And I just said, oh my God, look at the lock. And in this lock, was I think it's about five or six gigantic oil rigs all chained down anchored down so took pictures of that it was an interesting thing so that was very interesting and took a picture of the van after I just cleaned it as well which is a bit sad but that's me all right uh, you know you kind of feel like you're in Scotland now it's weird because up to that point Cairngorm's beautiful but up to that point the NC5 was just you know, yeah, so we see, but we see sea every day because where we live. So it was, you know, it was nice, but it wasn't blowing me away. And then seeing those, because um, obviously we don't see those down here, um, the oil rigs. So that was amazing. Um, so we carried on. And my wife and I had goals for the NC500. My goal was to see a stag, a big stag. Um, you know, huge antlers in its natural environment. Like we've got deer and stags down here, but you know, when you think of Scotland, you kind of think stag. And my wife wanted to go to um, a distillery and do a tour of a distillery. So I said, okay, you know, we've got loads of time. We'd actually had over a week to do all of this, what we wanted to do. So we had plenty of time to get on with it. So got back in the van, left the oil rigs, carried on. We traveled over some locks which was stunning we went over one it's it wasn't a bridge it looked like a bridge but uh, it was on ground um and halfway across i said to my wife, wow look at that bird and there was this huge bird sat on um on the railing i said what was that it doesn't look like a buzzard or anything like that which we have down here i said i'll tell you what I'm going back. Let's just see if we can get a picture of it. So we went all the way across this lot, round and round about and come all the way back. And luckily there was no traffic behind. So I stopped in the middle of the road and uh, took a picture of it. And it had this massive salmon in its foot and it was stood. And uh, we'll put the picture in here. And, um, and then took a load of pictures. And then amazingly, as we drove off, it took off and it followed. So as we were driving away, it was flying alongside us. So we got some more pictures of that and then went up the road, turned around, come back, carried on. So as we were carrying on, my wife um, texted my dad, who's very heavily into his birds and said, oh, what's this bird? And um, I think it was a, was it an osprey? Uh, I can't remember now. I think it was an osprey. We'll put it over the screen if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, it was just like a, quite a rare bird. And we saw this bird eating this huge salmon. It was, and it was massive, absolutely massive. So that was a real amazing moment. And uh, yeah, so we carried on from there. And then we saw signs for a distillery. And I'm like, yeah, you want to go? Let's, you know, let's do it. So we pulled into this distillery and it was all shut. Gates down, not open. I was like, oh, oh well, you know, well, we tried. So we pulled out of there, traveled probably 30 more miles, another sign for another distillery. And I said, well, it's not no harm in trying, so let's go in that one. And um, it was the Glen Morangy. Now, we got told off when we, because we did the full tour, we'll put some pictures up of what the place looked like. We weren't allowed to take pictures on the 
inside of the distillery but we got a few nice ones so we put them up here and at the end they the uh, lady who took the tour said now scottish people is she said it's glen now think of orangey because every the british people seem to say glenmorangie and that's wrong it's glen orangey either it's morangy or orangey she said that's the way to think it's glen morangy so yeah we got told off for that and uh, they said there's a lot yeah people call it what they want but the actual way to say it is that so that was that and obviously i didn't drink we had tasters i didn't have it because um obviously i was driving and you know i'm not the biggest fan if i'm honest but uh my wife had hers and my daughter's and she loved it um so yeah that was that and uh that was uh it's a really interesting really interesting actually i didn't think i'd enjoy it but in the end i actually did really enjoy it so um yeah that was a, a very good place to go if anyone wants to go um i think we'll leave it there for now and um let me know what you think if you've been on the same tour if you've done the same trip chuck it in the comments like and subscribe and see you in the next one cheers guys